There have always been people who don't believe. They don't believe in hard work. They don't believe in responsibility. Ultimately, they don't believe in themselves. They believe in shortcuts, in luck. They believe that outside circumstances control who succeeds and who doesn't. It's just the luck of the draw. But you, you are not one of these people. You believe that no matter what your circumstances tell you, success is still possible. And, and you accept this responsibility because you want to achieve something great. You're hungry for it. You, you chase it from the moment your eyes open in the early morning. You chase it into all hours of the night when others have given up, when others have said that it couldn't be done. You've kept pushing because you believe that success is not a game of chance. Success is a choice, a choice that you make every single day. That's what you believe. Some shows don't need a celebrity narrator to introduce the show. But this show does. In a world filled with endless opportunities, why would two men who have built 13 multi-million dollar businesses altruistically invest five hours per day to teach you the best practice business systems and moves that you can use? because they believe in you, and they have a lot of time on their hands. They started from the bottom, now they're here. It's the Thrive Time Show starring the former U.S. Small Business Administration's Entrepreneur of the Year, Clay Clark, and the entrepreneur trapped inside an optometrist body, Dr. Robert Zutner. Two men, eight kids, co-created by two different women. 13 multi-million dollar businesses. We started from the bottom, now we We started from the bottom, and we'll show you how to get you. We started from the bottom, now we We started from the bottom, now we Started from the bottom, and now we're at the top Teaching you the systems to get what we got Colton Dixon's on the hooks, I break down the books The seeds bringing some wisdom and the good looks As the father of five, that's why I'm alive So if you see my wife and kids, please tell them hi It's the CNC up on your radio And now three, two, one, here we go We started from the bottom, now we Business exists to serve the owner. Oh no, that's controversial. So now that's now you bring. Oh, you had to bring it right off the bat. You told me that. I, I did. Okay, so let's let's start with that. Well, it's, um, on, it's on one mean? of my princi- It's on one of my principles. It's it's one of my principles um, that I'm the book that I'm writing. By the way, your agent said she was going to do my book for me. He fought. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Shunda. Shunda. That's the move. I gave her. I gave her the short story of it. She loved it. It's called business. It's the working tells business pig, but in, and and in it the chapters are all based upon pigs. I don't know why pigs. They just seem to kind of work out. And one of them, one of my chapters is big pig eats at the trough first. In other words, when you slop, when the farmer gets out there and feeds the pigs, the big, the biggest one says, "This is the spot I want." Right. Right. And all the others gather. All the others pick the other spots. Is, that's the way it is. That's the way nature is. That's the way it is on the farmyard, and that's what it should be in your business too. The business should be there. You should you should think of yourself as the big pig at that trough. And you may say to yourself, "That's not that's weird." You know, that's I don't under, I don't get that. I'm here to I want to make the world a better place. I want to make an app that that helps humanity. I want to you know we want to build something green. We want to you know I'm here for the my customers. My patients are more important. My my employees are above. I put them above me. I'm the I'm the lowest of the low of the low. I'm the, I'm the, you know and that's not the right mindset you need to have. And that may be why so many of them fail. And, I'm, and I'm, I'm going to wage war for a second okay. on the Here vast majority of psychologists. I have heard this so much. This it's a new thing. See, we're labeling anybody who's successful. It's the new thing. Not we, but most. Because I mean, again, by default, most people are not successful. I mean, Gallup shows that seventy percent of people hate their jobs. Right. Uh, 
Inc. shows 85% of people lie on their resumes. 75% are stealing from their jobs. 96% of people are failing in their business. So you think about this. The, the, the stats, I mean, the average person is not super successful. So, Josh, have you ever discovered that when a lot of people aren't the Yankees, they don't like the Yankees? Or people, a lot of people aren't the Patriots, they don't like the Patriots? Or whoever's winning, you know, you're either winning or you're whining about the winner. Have you noticed that phenomenon? Oh, tremendous level of envy in our, in our society. Tremendous level. So there's a term that I've heard a lot in the last uh, f- probably – Five months. It seems like once you hear an idea, you start to hear it over and over and over again. And I keep hearing this phrase, NPD. It's probably because I'm around... NPD. It's probably because I have uh, heavily educated people that are in my life who uh, many... uh, The people I choose to be around are very successful, but some of them are not. And they go, you have like NPD. I've heard this now multiple times. What's NPD? NPD. So I say, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to look up NPD. Okay. It says narcissistic personality disorder. Oh, my goodness. Now, let me me read what it says. It says, a personality disorder characterized by a long-term pattern of exaggerated feelings of self-importance, an excessive need for admiration, and a lack of empathy toward other people. So I printed off the definition. I sat down with the person who made the statement, and I said, I would like to go down. I'd like to talk about NPD. Sure. So let's talk about So exaggerated. Hey, while we're doing it, can we talk about me? <laughs> <laughs> well, I said, uh, it's enough. We spent too much time with me talking yeah, about yeah, me. Now yeah. let's let you, you talk, talk about, about, about me. me. So I, I said, so when I, we talk about an exaggerated long-term pattern, a long-term pattern of exaggerated feelings of self-importance, how do I do this? And they said, well, every time that anyone's late, it bothers you. Like, you're the most important thing in the world. And I said, well, I have to be on time because I committed to being on time. And so if you won't wrap up, if, you know, if you're here past the time we've agreed on, you're, you're a visitor, I do have to leave because I had to be somewhere else. I mean, I've, I've committed. And they go, yeah, but you just went to, you know, go to the mall, let's say, to get your wife something. You didn't have, like, somewhere to go. You, you, just, you just went to the mall. I'm like, no, I may put it on my schedule to go get the things for my wife at the mall and, and – uh, somehow the appointments that I set with other people aren't less important or more important than that, more important than the appointments I set for myself. The mall, the mall is the mall narcissistic. Is the mall is well, and then this other seriously, this, this, this is a thing. Then I had an extended family member that pointed out. They said the other da- day I asked if I could come by, and you said no. You had something scheduled, and then when I came by your house, you were downstairs by yourself, just working on one of your books. And I said, well, that's how you write books. You schedule it. You typically don't write a book with other people. That's probably why mine's not written yet. You know what I, I mean? You schedule it. You right. have a people. On. <laughs> Thank you. That's the word I needed today. Thank you. Drop the mic. Okay, there we go. But you know what I'm saying? Though? No, I hear you. Yes. So, and so it says an excessive need for admiration. Um, I don't know about you, the listeners out there, but I don't apply to win business war- awards. I don't apply. I don't. I don't fill out the forms. There, they. John told me about some award that we qualified for, and I, I don't like filling out the forms because then they want you to go to the awards banquet that you somehow have to buy a seven table. seats mm. oh, at yeah. a, table a table for 400 bucks a yeah. piece. Well, so you could your, upgrade that to a gold sponsor now. Ooh. So somehow only the people that are sponsors in the magazine have won the award. You know that game. Oh, oh sure. What, really? That's shocking. Clay, you've been selected. Shocking. Sele- Is this Clay? Clay, you've been selected by the, the Tulsa such and such association. Thank you for being a platinum the sponsor. Top seven entrepreneurs in the city. Yes. Uh, there's a $4,000 application fee you have to pay as we vet you. You're the only man that's ever bought 27 tables. Whoa, that's <laughs> impressive. In fact, we've got a feeling you're in the front runner for oh. next year, too. But, I, but the thing is, once you build success, there are certain people that are going to say something. And I don't run around needing people to applaud. But when they do say thank you, I don't hide from it. And then empathy. Um. Z, if, if you have people who work for you at the auto auction, let's say, and by the way, you have a great team. We met so many of them at the uh, Christmas party. Great mm-hmm. people. Yes. Uh, great people over there at the optometry clinic. Great people at all your businesses. What would happen to your great businesses if you had extreme empathy for non-performers and kept them on your roster? It'd be like probably the 96% of the people that don't last a decade. Right. And that's what happens. Right. You, there, there's two different categories. You, w- when you have an employee, that's not the same thing as a friend. It's kind of like I have friends of mine that are very close to me, and I have a lot of empathy for them. But if I have someone hired and they're not doing their job, I've got to do what's best for the business. It's kind of like parenting. I tell some of my friends all the time, your children needs a parent, not a friend. That doesn't mean that you can't, you know, have good times with them. 
but there's discipline, there's consequences, and there's hard decisions that need to be made. And, and as a business owner, you have to do the same thing. That doesn't mean you don't care about them as an individual. You just care about your business more than them. It's, oh, is that, did that hurt? Oh, that sounded bad. But it's true. It sounded bad. It sounded bad. Are you going to cry? You need well, a, it's, I may need a hug. It sounded. Someone give me a hug. Do you need sounded, a safe space? I need a, a safe space. I need a hug. No, but that, but that's that's a truth bomb that people need to hear. And that is you always have to be doing, the filter is what is best for my business. And if that means letting someone go who's not performing. NPD, baby. Who's not doing their job. NPD. It doesn't mean you don't have empathy for them. NPD. But you have more empathy for your business because of all the other people that are still working there. If you continue to keep people on like that, guess what? You shutter the doors and then they're all out of job. Everybody's got to find a new job, even you. So the most selfish thing you could do is not to fire them because then everyone would lose their job. Amen. And even like in, in parenting, not to make not to beat this horse too much, but even in then it's kind of like you spoil your children. It's it's really harder on you down the road. People want discipline. They want to know what the rules are. They want the lane that they're that they're supposed to be in. And and as a boss, as a parent, as a person, that's what we do. And I have some friends that they don't work for me, obviously. They're just friends. I have a lot of empathy for them. They're going through rough times, good times. I celebrate with them. I cry with them. I mean, whatever's necessary, you you live life with them, you know. But that doesn't mean that you know your hourly employees. You you treat them the same thing as you do your friend that you hang out with them on your back porch. It, it's a whole different level. So I can see where people would say, though, that you don't have much empathy, Clay, because you are a, a businessman and you're here to win. And winning means that you hold people accountable. You make sure they're doing their job. And if they're not, you're not ruthless. You're just taking care of business, kind of like going into your garden and pruning a bush. I mean, you love your bush. You, you want it to grow and be so, so, pr productive, but sometimes you got to cut something so off of it. We've been to other Christmas parties in the past. I've been to many of them that uh, uh, I DJed. And what makes you different about your Christmas parties than other people is you said, hey, Clay, I've got a bunch of money I want to give away for some prizes. I didn't have to. I could have put that in my pocket. And you said, I want to give some money away, and let's go ahead and do it now. Right. But a lot of business owners are like, hey, is it a good time to give away money? And they run it by a committee of people. And Josh, I'm sure you've seen this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm serious. And you've, we've all been to the Christmas party that never starts. Right. Mm. And they run it by a committee. And they're like, well, why don't we wait until after the food is served? Okay. Why don't we wait till after the blessing? Okay. Why don't we wait till after the first half hour? Why don't we wait for after the hour? Why don't we wait until? Why don't we not get dancing until two hours? And let's let's not. And they keep it's the committee thing because they don't want to offend anybody. Absolutely. And they have the reverse of whatever this NPD thing is. Again, nar narcissistic personality disorder says it's a personality disorder characterized by a long-term pattern of exaggerated feelings of self-importance. If you're the boss, you have to know that your vote is the most important vote. It is a benevolent dictatorship. And therein lies the rub, because as you just pointed out, in our society today, just using the United States of America and the data we get from very knowledgeable sources, I mean, this is just just math, right? that there's very few people that handle that and do it successfully. You know, there's very few teams that win six Super Bowls, and yet everybody wants to put haterade on them, you know? And everybody wants to, you know, hate on them. But the thing about it is, is that when you're winning – it means that you made a lot of tough decisions. Right. And everybody can nitpick and second guess and Monday quarter Monday quarterback or couch, whatever quarterback it is. In other words, they can always second guess what you've done and say, well, I would have done it different or that wasn't right. That wasn't fair to, to Melissa. You shouldn't let her go. Or, you know, Billy was really trying hard. Or, you know, you did this, you did that. You know, you should have spent your money there. You should. I mean, everybody has their opinion. But if, listen, if you're one of those few people out there that's being successful or wants to be successful, you've got to understand you've got to put on your, your earmuffs and just walk through that noise and just let it roll off you like water off a duck. Because I'm telling you what, when you are the boss... And, and you have a lot of people depending upon you. Sometimes you've got you, you yes. to leave one behind for the good of, the, the good of everybody. And right. it's tough. I'm not, it's not easy. It's tough. But it's being able to make those tough decisions in a timely fashion that helps make you successful. So let's think about this. And Josh, I, 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 uh, uh, your, the name of your company is Living Water Irrigation. Yes, it's a Christian company. Yes, sir. Therefore, Z, uh, I'm just going to assume wait, no, a lot no, Wait a second. Time out, time out, time out. Yeah. Well, we're going to talk about the 99. When you say it's a Christian company, what do you mean by that, Josh? What do you so mean? We no longer, our, I mean, wait, okay, he no longer rips the heads off of goats and drinks their blood oh, on the job. Oh, you've given oh, that, that up. Wow. It's not okay, a pagan good. company. Okay. Well, uh, well I, so, I didn't so, know he stopped that. To address specifically the 99, Dr. Zoner, you know, because Jesus would leave the 99 to go get the one. 
But in business, you have to do the exact opposite. You have to care for the 99 and let the one go. You know, and I think so often that as a Christian businessman and other Christian businessmen out there, you get uh, paralyzed by, oh, my gosh, what are they going to say about me or what are they going to do? You absolutely positively want to operate your business from the principles of of giving back and you want to make sure that you're operating with good morals and values. But you have to be a great steward of the gifts and talents and abilities that God has given you and the money that he's entrusted you with and the people that he has entrusted you with. So it's unfair to the 99 to let the one pull the ship down. It, it, that's great. You know, and they say one bad apple. I mean, they say these things, and it's true. If you've ever owned a business and had a bad employee that you put up with too long, you know what we're talking about. They they will sour the rest oh of them. Oh, my gosh. It's crazy. Yeah, I mean, you put up with uh, Carl coming in late every day. Oh, my so gosh. So I guess I can. That's the new standard. You know, we're, we, you don't hold anybody to a standard, so then we're just going to do that. And it makes it tough. I tell you what, it's – it's one of the toughest things because you you want your staff to like you as a person. Just, right. There's a core of you that wants that, um, whether you have the MPD like Clay has or not. Um, That's right. Which we haven't really <laughs> vetted that out yet. But uh, you you want there's part of you just as a human that wants to be liked. You know. Sure. You, and you want to be successful, and you want to think that every decision you're making for your business, every one of your employees and vendors and and business partners is yeah is okay with and they're saying you know what you the man you got you got that right right you got that right oh yeah that's a good decision but in reality there's a big part of them are going you got that right you should have done that what do you think of there oh yeah i got a question G. i got a question are you Little down with mpd are you down with mpd mpd <laughs> you know with mpd, MPD. yeah Little MPD. Know, this, is, this, is, this is a big question here i think a lot of people though um, I'll keep that. that's, t- a, that's a fun little background. It is a fun, it's like great. That. Now, let, let, me, let me cue this up. I want to make sure we get this, okay? Okay. Make sure we get this. All right. Is NPD is described as a person who has a long-term pattern. Long-term. How, how long uh, is long, I wonder? It's called diligence. Yeah. Consistency. So it's a person who has a diligent pattern of self-importance. Self-importance means that what you're doing is important, that yourself is important. I think that's a good thing. I don't think it's a bad thing, but like a lot of things... It can, you know, there, there's always levels of things. Well, you could be a homeless guy who thinks that you're the mayor. Yes. I mean, that's a problem. <laughs> you, could wear, I mean, you could wear an old an old bathrobe you found in the, tra- in the dumpster, you know. I mean, that does, you, know, you it's could got be the side losing walk around a, like, hey, I'm something important. I'm you could be deal. losing in business and won a trophy. That's somebody who needs an admiration for something they didn't earn. Right. And lack of empathy. I mean, you could run around just slapping people at the mall. <laughs> I mean, you could just do that. I mean, you could be taking ice cream cones from little kids. You could do that, I guess. But what I'm saying to somebody out there is that Jesus in the book, the, the Bible, controversial. Uh-oh, we're going back to uh-oh. Matthew uh, chapter 21, oh, yeah, verses yes. 12 uh-oh. through 23. Uh-oh. I'm going to read this to you, and then it's the Bible scholar on today's show, yeah. uh, Josh. Oh, whoa. You have to. Whoa. You've never claimed to be a Bible scholar, but you're, you own a Bible, so therefore you're our scholar. I'm going to read it to you. You could break down what you think it sure. means to you, uh, and then and, 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 uh, Z it can one-up you. Can I, okay. can I play a little... Uh, I'm playing a little music background. Okay, yeah, let me make sure. Oh, you have me passively are, are we back to OPP the, while reading the Bible? No, 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 we're not going to do that. And by the way, that was NPD. We would never play OPP on this show. <laughs> Something we would not do. Uh, it says uh, Matthew 21, verses mm. 12 to 23. Yes. 12 to 13. Yes. Jesus entered the temple courts enter, 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 enter. and drove out all who were buying and selling there. Selling, 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 selling. He turned the tables. He overturned the tables of the money changers change, 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 and the benches. Of those selling doves. It is written, he said, my house will be called a house of prayer. But you're making it a den of robbers. I don't think I read it with right energy. Let me try again. Here we go. You did good, I think. I gave it one more time. Okay, I, gotta, okay, I, think, I, think, I think our culture. Would you try this time? I, want our cult, I think our culture reads it with a little more of an effeminate tone. Oh. Where it's oh. like. Oh, my. Jesus, he entered into the temple courts. Yeah, and that's he drove not out yeah. all who were. Buying and selling there, and, and some people he just no, no one was. He said, "Shoot, get on out of here." He overturned or, or, or shoe just fly, he, shoe. He nudged the tables of the shoe, money changers. And, he said, and, and the "These bench. tables would look better over here, he and did, not over he here." He just re, re, moved them. He moved them. He removed he the just, tables. He, he said, didn't overturn them. He, the feng shui he turned them around. The feng shui is all, all and he wrong. He made peace. He was coexisting. He was high fiving with the brothers out there who were selling dubs. Is that a rock dub? Can I see it is, your dubs? It is written. He said to them, and then he said, "Are you guys offended? Because if you are, I'll take it back." I think that's a. He says, I think that's a rock dub. Can I can I hold he you? He says dub? my house will be called a house of prayer. 
you know, but you're I, making I'm it a den of robbers. Or this is, if you're this not a offended heavy, by this, that. a heavy suggestion. But you know what I'm saying? Okay, is, come on now. You read know it like you're supposed to. Okay, Jesus entered the temple courts and drove out all who were buying and selling. Come there. on now. He overturned the tables of the money what? changers and the benches of those selling doves. It is written, he said to them, oh. "My house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers." Josh. Wow. Oof, that was, that was, I've never, that was fun. I've, I mean, this is, I don't know back in the day, I don't know how heavy the tables were. I don't know the, the standard dimensions. Uh, you know, the NBA has a 10-foot high uh, basketball sure. goal. I don't know the dimensions of the standard table back in the day. But my understanding is we didn't have the Ikea desks that are super light. So Jesus. <laughs> there was no particle board. No yeah, so when he, when, he, when he flipped the table, when he flipped the table, I mean, no I'm saying, particle how board. would that go over today if you heard of a businessman in Tulsa who flipped over the tables because his employees wouldn't adhere to his rules. Well, I think it absolutely positively has to happen. So we'll go scriptural, and then we'll go real-world uh -oh. actionable okay. things. Like so scripturally, wow. Here we go. a lot of people think Jesus was, 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 was weak. He wasn't weak. He was meek. A lot of people think that he just let anything go. Yes, he did walk with prostitutes, That's and he walked with murderers, right. and he walked with sinners, but he was not one. So it is okay to be, to be meek and to be powerful, to believe in what you believe in, to be to be very principled. So for as a business owner, you need to set your guidelines, your expectations, your requirements, and your responsibilities. And if those things aren't met, sometimes you got to have a little righteous anger. Sometimes you got to throw a fit. Sometimes you have to get in there and let everybody know how passionate you are. And, and sometimes it takes a overt act. And Jesus knew in that exact instance that if he walked in and said, hey, guys, hey, guys, hey, everybody, hey, I think we're gonna need to maybe stop what we're doing. It would not have had the impact and the effect. So he went in now, and flipped the table. I, I used to DJ at clubs, and what would happen at Club Z is a guy would step on the, on another man's shoes. Usually, oh, there was tables oh, yeah. flipped. Here we go. Or a guy would dance with a, a guy would go to get a, a drink. And Can I guy dance, would dance with y'all woman? With, another guy would go dance with his girl while he was getting a drink. Oh yeah. And so one guy walks up and says, "You got, you, you, you have a problem? You got a problem?" But usually the guy who says that statement is already so worked up he can't even talk really. He's like, you, know, you can, yeah, you can sense the adrenaline. He's like, you got a problem? You got a problem? And every guy's like, I ain't got a problem. Because all, like, all of a sudden shoving goes back and forth. Oh, yeah. And then pretty soon you hear, and, and punching in movies always sounds like this. It's like a, psh, psh, psh. that's how punching in movies. Psh, you watch a Rocky, it's, psh, psh. but in real life it sounds more like this. It's more of like. Like a wet fish being slapped have against you ever, have the have stone wall. See, have you ever seen a good fight? Y yes, Josh. Have you I've seen got five fight? brothers. Yes, Hello. Yeah. But I mean, in, like in a club scenario, when you're in a club, it sounds like this. It doesn't sound like. It doesn't sound like a Rocky movie. You, they like they don't have like little, like boom and pow like in the old Batman sh shows right. where they you know None like uh, kaboom. No automatopias. Yeah, you know, a little. None anyway. of that. It doesn't doesn't sound the way maybe you you think it does. Yeah. And people aren't as tough as they are in movies. Like in Rocky, a guy will take. You know, five or six of punches, yeah. Oh, yeah. and then he'll come back, and, 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 then, and then the epic music cues. Cut me. You got to cut me. So he gets up, and then he'll grab, like, a, a beer bottle and oh, chase yeah. the other guy down and hit him. Oh, yeah. And your guy's like, he well, recovers, my favorite he is the comes pool, back. The pool sticks where they just club a guy, and he's just standing there, you know, like, like right. he'd be able to stand there. Yeah. Right, and you just don't, <laughs> you, 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 I'm serious, you don't see that kind of stuff. In, in real life, so Hollywood's usually realistic? it's one guy wow. who gets punched. And usually he's a he's a tough guy. He's wearing a nice fancy shirt. He's got the good shirt on and the nice jeans. And blood's everywhere. And and one one punch happens. He's like this. He and has he's the, on the and he crumples on the ground. He's like ah, <laughs> blood everywhere. Yeah. He has the uh, the uh, affliction shirt on and the bedazzled jeans. Right. Oh yeah, you know. Right. Yeah. Hey hey. This hey. just in club fights don't sound like this. <laughs> They they sound like, they, like they don't sound like this. They sound more of like this. Now, so let's. So I want to make sure we get that. But also, so, when Jesus walked in to flip the tables, Z, do you picture him walking in like, oh no? Because there's certain cultures. Okay, now work with me on this. If you're from the eastern part of Broken Arrow, right? Eastern Broken Arrow. This is how you're going to come into Wagner a fight. County. You're going to come and that. go. All right, it's going down. Who wants it? Come on now. Who you wants, wants it? a piece of this? Let me take my good shirt off. I'll tell you what, and you're you know, and you you're you're wearing like a cutoff and you're all right, who wants it? Who wants and you're just kinda of, it's like a it's like a, a kind of a redneck. Sometimes you might have a deeper tone where I'll tell you what, how big of a boy are you? You know, you know, you, Oh yeah, I'll tell you what. Where, no. Who's the guy who danced with my girlfriend? Whereas you, you might get on that microphone at the club, you stop the music. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I have an announcement here. 
I'm going to be opening a Bobby, can Bobby, you get away from that boy right now. Bobby, see you get away from him right now because I'm about ready to open up a can of whoop A on him. You better, you better, you got a, you got a will, brother. You got a will. I'll tell you, I'll give you a second to fill this paperwork, and then I'm gonna. You go outside, practice falling down because I'm coming right behind. And there's other cultures that walk in and they go, "Oh no, no, you didn't." And other people are like. Yes, he did. No, and they start to go back. There's like a whole, the whole crowd is in her engaging. No, you didn't. Yes, he did. Oh, 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 it's going to go down. It's going to go. And all of a sudden, the crowd's going. Either way, I just want to know, what do you think happened? As I'm not aware of the, the culture there. Did Jesus walk in? And he's kind of a quiet, and he's like, now I will flip the tables. Did he do that? I mean, did he say, uh, it is written, flip the table? I and mean, what, what do you picture that like? When he's flipping tables. I mean, I've never flipped the table. I just want to know. Righteous Anger 101. You've never flipped a You've never flipped the table. I have fl- uh, thrown a printer. That's close. I've, I've, I've got to give it. That's, I mean, throwing a printer, flipping a table. Those, well, are, those no. are the same. It was the a same brother category. Printer. It, was a, it was like a, a 2140 series or something. When you're, yeah. when you're throwing a brother 21, is it, what, what's it? It's a TN, TN, uh, like a 720 or something. Well, yeah, it's like a scanner, number. a copier. Uh, it's got Kendall, look at that printer underneath you there. What, what, what is the model number? There's a TN. T- 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 n- when you're throwing a TN 730. Well, that's not a 720. It's a 730 down here. And it's not like throwing a table. I'm talking about the old school table. What was that like? What do you think the, the work, the, the wind up was like there? I think it was pretty intense. I think it was pretty cool. I mean, I mean that that is, you know, we, we, we think we know, but we don't know. And, and that's just a perfect scenario of of truth. And, and I tell you what, whenever people are doing the wrong thing in the wrong place at the wrong time, it takes someone to come along to bring light into that and make it right. And so, and as a business owner, yeah, to bring it back to bring it back to that, that's what you've got to do. Yeah. Sometimes you've got to walk into your business and flip a table. So and you don't want to flip a table every day, right? You don't flip every table, and but yet at times you want to do that. I mean, Jack Welch talks in his book about winning, saying about a public hanging. What well, you're yes, not really hanging people; these are these are metaphors, firing people. And yet, what we have to do as a business owner, you have to be kind of really have that righteous indignation sometimes to come in, roar in, and roar in, roar in, and make things right if they're not right. If people are doing, you know, you may be, you may go on a cruise. The love boat. Soon, Soon we'll, we'll be making a Have I shown you the picture of my mother-in-law with Tom Cruise? Uh, uh, thank oh, with you. The Tom Hanks? Yeah. Um, Tom, Tom Cruise. Tom Hanks. Tom Cruise. Tom, uh, Tom Hanks. From, from the love boat. Top Gun. From oh, the Love Boat. Oh, the Love Boat, Have too. I shown that to you? No, I, I knew, I knew me, Tom me, Cruise from the Top quick, Gun. Let me show you. This is oh Tom Hanks from the got, Love Boat. Just she's, she's kind of a big deal. But my point is, is that if you go on a cruise and you come back and you're like all tanned and all ready to go, and you're yeah. like, oh yeah, high and tight, yeah, oh yeah, I've had a few, few too many banana daiquiris on the boat, but I'm okay, you know, time for oh, my liver to get a little rehab. Oh, and you time. pop into the office, you know, and things are like, sometimes you got to flip over table. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you've got to flip over. You're sometimes. like, oh, what in the world? I'm gone for a week. I'm gone for two weeks. I'm gone for you know three days, whatever. And it happens, right, Josh? Has that ever happened to you? Well, I, I guess my question would be for the listeners out there, Doctor Zoners, to make it actual. When do you know how to gauge that? Can you can you give our listeners an idea of when is the time? Hey, that it needs to go that extreme, or or how do you judge your level of uh, of response? Well, that, the love that, is great, that is a great that is that is a great question, Josh. And I think that that unfortunately, too many people are too quick to flip a table. Too many people okay. are too quick to say, oh, my goodness, what the hey who is going on here, right? Mm. And, you know, oftentimes it cause, it, there's a cause, you know, you stop, pause, assess, and then try to gauge what people are doing, why they're doing it, correct them in a friendly, happy, kind way. But every now and then it's gotten so off kilter that you've just got to step in and go, you know what? This is going to require me to flip a table, and I, I, I don't. It, you know, I've been doing it now for almost thirty years, right. running biz, owning, running businesses, and there's kind of a sixth sense that lets you know when that's the case. It's when being civil no longer works. When you've tried all the options, and you're like, "Hey, Iran, you need to stop building a nuclear arsenal." Hey, we've had this discussion, Saddam Hussein. Hey, employee who keeps printing after we've told you to not use the color printer. At a certain point, when you've been nice, Z, and you've tried all the methods, 
You do the Jack Welch move, as you mentioned, the public hanging, and Jack Welch says public hangings are teaching moments. And, and, and for example, I uh, I don't want to get too many details on this. A um, little, little fresh still, a little fresh. No, 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 no. It's like, it's like, yeah, it's like 14, month, 14 so, years ago. Sometimes, you know, you, you, you just don't want to be too fresh on things. But, but the point is, is that you always want to keep a calmness about you as a business owner. You always want to say, because calmness instills in people that you're in control, at least in control of yourself. And the day that you're not in control of yourself, the day that you're raising your voice, the day that you're saying things you don't normally say, in other words, maybe cuss words or, or inappropriate language, if you will, then it, it has a feeling that you're out of control. And when you're out of control, nobody wants to follow out of control. No one does. You want to you want to feel like you're on the love boat at all times. All, all times. We we doing a love boat. I'll come back to that. We doing a love well, boat I break. Wanted, I want to show this picture real quick. I oh, think we've it's got we got we got a picture. Look at this. We got a picture. Uh, Wes, I can show this picture. You can see it. This is my mother-in-law on the love boat with Tom Hanks. There she is. The right or left? And there she is. Right. There she is. There she is. So just there she is on the love boat. That's my mother-in-law right there. Yeah, the blonde-haired lady. Yep. There she is. So I just want to show the listeners. I, I, I hate to, you know, when you make a claim like your mother-in-law was rubbing lotion on Tom Hanks' chest, you can't you, you make that back kind it of, up. You, you got to back you, it otherwise up. Otherwise, people say, this guy's what? a charlatan. He's making these he's, things up. And he's not. I mean, he's that's, not. That's he's, that's this is true stuff. Visual proof. So let's talk about this, though. So you're saying you want to maintain your calm. You want to maintain your calm at all times because what happens is, is that when you maintain self-control, because mm. self-control is very important through all this. So when you're, when you walk into your business, let's let's use this example. When you you've been away maybe for a little bit, we're talking about Jesus turning over the tables in the temple. Oh yeah, that righteous indignation. So putting that in perspective for, for business owners. So you walk. So let's say you're gone a few days. You're on a cruise. That's what got the love boat theme going. West. So West is, West just joined the joined it. Hi West. How you doing, buddy? Hello. And so what happens is is that if you walk, you've been gone for a week on a cruise, the love boat. Hello. You come back in, and all of a sudden there's a significant thing that's wrong oh, with your business. And, and how? What does it look like to flip the table, oh. metaphorically speaking? And so what I was saying is it's always important to keep your cool, keep your cool. Don't lose your control. Self control is very important. But I'm telling you what, what's scarier to an individual is someone that has that laser focus with the self-control that is saying the right things. And the right things are, for example, you might be saying, you know, what in the world is happening here? Why is it happening? Who's in charge of this? What's going on? Why is this happening? You know, and with the tone of voice that, quite frankly, you learn from parenting, that uh, makes people go, hmm, oh, he's serious. Uh-oh, he's upset. Uh-oh, he's mad. You haven't yelled. You haven't screamed. You haven't used profanity. You haven't done anything inappropriate. You haven't ah, punched somebody in the throat like you'd like to do sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> or like you said, more like, more of that sound. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the point is, is that sometimes whenever, like, like I've been in some business deals where I've been good, taking the high road, the high road, being nice, being nice. They're not getting it done. 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 High road, high road, nice, nice. Finally, I have a meeting. Pull all the key people in the meeting. Shut the door. Shut the door. And I look at them and I say, gentlemen, this is unacceptable. And they're like, well, what, 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 what do we need to get done? What, what, what's going on? What, why are you so, what, 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 what's up? What's up? What's up? And, and I, here's what we need to get done. Here's why it's not done. And if it can't get done, then I'm going to fire y'all. And they're silent. And they look at each other going, you know what? We probably should get this done. I think, I think, I, I think, think, I think I got a good feeling. I got a good feeling I, that I we. I got a feeling. We, you know, I think, I think he's serious. I don't, I don't think. I think he they look to the left, right. I think he's serious. Okay, you know. And I'm like, and here's your time frame to get it done. And I'm, and I'm tired of this. Boom. And then you stand up. But you know what? Thank you. Thank you. I, I think you can get it done. I hope you can. But if you can't, all right. Don't make me bang. And what I, my saying is I always say, Clay, and you may have heard me say this. Yep. Wes, Josh, I don't know if you've heard me say this or not, but my, my big saying is don't make me beat that drum. I don't want to beat the drum. I haven't heard that yet. We all want to be the good cop. Who wants to? Who wants to play the bad cop? Nobody wants to play the bad cop. Bad cop's no fun. Put on a black hat. You said you don't want me to beat, beat that drum? I'm saying, don't make me beat that drum. Don't ma okay. You know what they say. Uh oh. Don't make me beat that drum. Don't do something. You know what they say. I'm just, don't make me beat that drum. Don't do you it. Know what they say. I'm saying, don't make me do it. Okay. No. So my point is, is that 
is that always try to keep your emotions in check. Mm-hmm. Try not to be. And I'm sure when he was flipping those tables over in the temple, he wasn't go, he wasn't yelling profanities and out of <laughs> control. And he was very probably concise. And he was probably and then then he he told them why he did it and why they shouldn't have been doing what they were supposed to what they were doing. And I think that's one of the things that we do is that sometimes we let we let things fester. And then whenever we're ready to flip a table, we lose control. And when so, I'm telling you as a business owner, as a person, don't lose control. Keep keep that control issue. Keep be resolved, but be firm and use the right words. Think about what you're going to say before you say it. There you go. And then act upon it and and take care of it. But but you know what? When you're the boss, when when you're it's your business. You you expect things a certain way. Make sure it happens that way. And uh, um, Wes, how are you, my friend? Good to see you. Oh, I'm, yeah. a, I'm amazing. Join. Yeah, I'm Wes joined. Wow, you what? stepped right in the middle of it right there, I Wes. I like coming in right and hot. Wes and I hot. talked twice today because apparently today is uh, National Attorneys Want to Work with Clay Clark Day. Yes. And so I had to let attorneys know that I cannot help them uh, with their business. This guy wow. with Mr. Wow. Wes Carter. But, um, Wes, the, um, the, 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 today's show title is, If You Haven't Been Livid, as it relates to your business, then you haven't lived as an entrepreneur. And again, with the word livid, I want to make sure we get this, means furious or angry. I mean, it, it, Z warned us about the dangers of going off, but also on the other side, there's the dangers of just not letting anything ever bother you. There's no sense of urgency. And when yes. things don't get done, it doesn't bother you at all. Talk to me about this because you come across as a stoic guy, mm. yet you do run the operations at winnersking.com. That's what you do. Um, he's talking about the dangers of on the one side, don't go off, don't lose your mind. Also, I see entrepreneurs that lose everything they've saved, all their money, all the, it, it, because they don't ever have a get up and go. Yeah. There's no urgency. They've never been livid. They never do get angry or never do get frustrated with mediocrity. What's the balance that you try to take? Because you're, you're doing well. You guys occupy a whole. What, what floor are you guys up there at the Cityplex? Uh, 59th floor. Are you still offering free high fives if people are willing to meet with you for an hour? If you walk all the way up the stairs, yes. If you walk up the stairs. <laughs> okay, wow. so you're on the 59th floor, beautiful view up there. Put that on the show notes. What's yeah. the balance there about that That sort of just lackadaisical drifting entrepreneur? Yeah, and I think everybody's got to find their lane. You have different personalities. So, obviously, Clay, you and I have different personalities. You're very outgoing, um, and I'm a little, like you said, more stoic. Yep. Um, but I think back to childhood when – your parents are mad at you and they're they're yelling at you you're like okay i'm in trouble but when pops comes in and he looks at you and is dead silent and it's oh. calmness what you're like da- Dad, oh no oh Dad, just your belt? yell at me Why say something yeah um you know i, I and i'm always conscious if you make emotional decisions they're almost always the wrong decisions there we go and so when you lose your cool um you're either not communicating the point well because you know you haven't thought it out like z said or you end up saying something you're going to regret and so you know what we what i try to do is address the problem there um but do it in a calm manner and then kind of like z said eventually you do have to up the volume level or up the seriousness a little bit when when things don't get done or when people ignore the direction you're giving them um and the other thing, you know, just personally, I have to watch how I communicate when I get frustrated. So, you know, I get frustrated when people don't do things they're supposed to do. And that can come off, you know, wrong to my, you know, people I work with if I'm not careful. You know, condescending or talking down to someone, not intentionally, but as a business owner. Oh, yeah. You expect someone to do something and when they don't do it or they don't understand it after you explained it to them multiple times. Yeah. I think you have to be careful how right. you communicate that right. to them. Right, right, right. Today, uh, uh, it, not a good story, but it happened today. And this show's going to come out in March, by the way, so people can't guess as to when this, this to what this situation okay. is. But uh, uh, we had a person on our team who, the way it works at our companies is when you get a lead, you need to call the lead every hour, all day. If someone fills out a form, we just call them every hour. We don't leave a message every hour. We just call them every hour until they cry, buy, or die. That's the, that's the, that's the policy. And you, so as soon as the lead comes in, you shoot them off a text, and then you call them till they cry, buy, or die. And in one of the companies today, uh, a member of the team, I said, hey, why haven't we booked this person? Multiple people were there. I did not raise my voice. And they said, well, I called them once. And I said, you mean that you called them once this week? Because today's Tuesday. Yeah. 
and there should be 16 calls. Well, fair, eight yesterday, and then today, you know, four, 12. Right. So far. Do you hate money? <laughs> and here comes the tears. Like, weep a thon. Like, sprinkler system. Like, living water irrigation did a good job. Like, I just, and this person is a kind person. And it's like, and I'm like, I am sorry. I did not mean to make you cry. And my wife was there. And it starts to do the, and I'm like, oh, oh. frick. Because you don't know what's going on in someone's personal life, too. Right, right. And I'm going, oh, give me, you just hang out here for a minute. I, I, I apologize. I didn't mean to raise my, did I raise my tone? And, but it was just like the wet, but the, 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 that's what I didn't say. Just of the look. Yes. Of, you got the look. You know what I'm saying? And it's oh, this yeah. thing of in, in indignation where it's an annoyance provoked by what is perceived as an unfair treatment. It's like, I'm like, why are we not calling our leads? I'm just like incensed. Like, what? Because it's every hour you're supposed to call the leads. And, the, and I thought maybe it would be like, well, yeah, I've, I've, I've been calling them every hour and I just can't reach them. But the response was I only called them one time and I'm just, I, I couldn't handle it. So what I want to do today is a capstone on today's show. I want to make sure the listeners get this. Think about something in your business today that's not getting done. You know, you want your team to get reviews on Google. You want, if you have an auto business, you need your employee, your your auction, you have to check the title on the vehicle before you sell it, right? Sure. Uh, you have a bank. You're not balancing the, 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 the books. you got to balance the books. You're a, uh, a law firm, and people aren't getting a deadline done. Or, mm -hmm. or you're a DJ company. People aren't doing things properly. You're irritating customers. You're a landscaping or irrigation company, and your employees aren't, showing up on time or, or putting in the sprinkler systems properly. Why are you letting it go? Like, what? why are you just letting it drift? And then ask yourself, take the emotion out. Use the emotion right now. That's a good thing. The emotion is going to help create the motion to get going. Come on, or man. The urgency. To use the emotion to create that motion. Okay, now you're urgent. Now go off to a quiet place and write down the words that need to come out of your mouth and the action items that you need to take so that this ridiculous jackassery can stop. But if you don't experience the feeling of anger a little bit when nothing's getting done, I worry about you. And I know you're not going to make it because you don't have the sense of urgency needed, which is why Matthew 21, 12 through 13, Jesus entered the temple, the temple courts and drove out all who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those who were selling. It is written, he said to them, my house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. If you read on in this great book called the Bible, there's a, ver a, a chapter called Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, verses 1 through 8. It's kind of a long one, but it reads, There is a time for everything, a season for every activity under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to be born, that sounds fun. A time to die, not so good. A time to plant, sounds good. A time to uproot, I don't know. A time to kill, ooh. A time to heal, oh, that's nice. A time to tear down, uh, no, what? A time to build, okay. A time to weep. A time to laugh, oh, that's great. A time to mourn, I don't know. A time to dance, that sounds cool. A time to scatter the stones. Yes, I love to scatter stones. I'm a dude. Yeah, that sounds a like time something. to gather them. I don't want to pick them up again. A time to embrace, a time to refrain, a time to search, a time to give up, a time to keep, and a time to throw away. A time to tear, and a time to mend, a time to be silent, and a time to speak. A time to love, and a time to hate. A time for war, and a time for peace. There's a time for all these things. And you can't be the guy in a warlike environment who's... Z... You hear the shots over there? You can hear the bombs. Z, 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 do you hear the bombs in the, in the in the distance there, friend? Oh, I just heard one. As your fellow foxhole brother. Oh, wow. I want to ask you. I, I got to ask I you something. I, just, I mean, I just heard a bomb. But I know one. we need to have a sense of urgency to go attack the bad guys yes, here in a minute. Yes, because I, I have, there's bombs I have, over there, apparently. Could you pass me the Laffy Taffy, though? Yo, I haven't read the joke on the inside of that packet. <laughs> I haven't read the I haven't read the joke on the inside of the... the, 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 the I need to read the I joke. I saved you this fortune cookie from... Panda Express from earlier today. But Maybe there are some people that operate like that, though. It's like there's no urgency at all. And so if you're Captain Urgency, then we might have to just think, time out, gather ourselves. But what I want you to do today as an action item is just have a sense of urgency about knocking out the things that need to be done. And with that, we're going to wrap up today's show with a boom. Z, are you prepared? Yes, I am. Josh, are you prepared to end with a boom? I am. Kendall, Captain Video, are you prepared to end with a boom? Wesley Carter, are you prepared to end with a boom? Wesley. I am. Here we go. Three, two, one, boom. What if you could gain access to download each and every book that I've ever written for free? Well, that'd be terrible because I don't like you. Okay, we're making a big assumption here. 
But assuming that you do like me and you like the Thrive Time Show, you can now go to thrivetimeshow.com forward slash free dash resources. That's thrivetimeshow.com forward slash free dash resources to download each and every book that I've ever written for free. You can download the ebook version of each and every book that I've ever written for free. Ah, uh, Clay, I just want to chime in here real quick. I don't like you. Or capitalism. I feel like we should all get free stuff. Well, I am in the process of explaining where you can get free stuff. And you can now also download all the helpful infographics. There's infographics on Firing 101, the perfect hiring system, the principles from Ray Dalio, Internet Marketing 101, the Lead Bin Management System, Managing Humans 101, Logo Creation 101, Why Google Loves WordPress, Time Management 101. We also have an incredible infographic about the importance of calling your leads often because the average person no longer answers their phone unless they are called multiple times and unless they receive a text from you. We also have the importance of File Nomenclature 101, Sales Lead Conversion 101, and much, much more. And it's all available for you to download for free right now by going to thrivetimeshow.com. Are you suggesting that I should have to move my body? Yes, it's for free. Isn't there a way you could just beam it? I mean, why do I have to move my body? Because it causes me anxiety. Whatever. Which is why I would never go to thrivetimeshow.com. Come on. Forward slash free dash resources. I would never go to thrivetimeshow.com forward slash free dash resources. All right, let me clarify. If you have the capacity to move your fingers, go to thrivetimeshow.com forward slash free dash resources to download an ebook version of every single Amazon best-selling book I've ever written and all the infographics that have the power to change your life. Gentlemen, let me introduce you to oh. the grill gun. Oh! Hi, I'm Bob Healy. I'm the inventor of the grill gun and the sous vide gun. Tim Tebow is coming to Tulsa, Oklahoma, June 27th and 28th. We've been doing business conferences here uh, since 2005. I've been hosting business conferences since, since 2005. And a lot of people, you know, have followed Tim Tebow's football career on the field uh, and off the field. And off the field, the guy's been just as successful as he has been on the field. Now, the big question is, JT, how does he do it? Hmm. Well, they're going to have to come and find out because I don't know. Well, I'm just so. saying, Tip Tebow is going to teach us how he organizes his day, how he organizes his life, how he's proactive with his faith, his family, his finances. He's going to walk us through his mindset that he brings into the gym, into business. It is going to be a blasty blast in Tulsa, Jerusalem. Also, this is the first uh, Thrive Time Show event that we've had where we're going to have a man who has built a $100 million net worth. Wow. He'll be presenting. Now, we've had a couple presenters that um, have had a billion dollar net worth mm. um in some like real estate sort of things yeah but this is the first time we've had a guy who's built a service business and he's built over a hundred million dollar net worth in the service business it's the yacht driving uh multi-state living guru of franchising peter taunton will be in the house this is the founder of snap fitness the guy behind nine round boxing he's going to be here in tulsa jerusalem tulsa jerusalem oklahoma june 27th and 28th jt why should should everybody want to hear what Peter Totten has to say? Oh, because he's incredible. He's just a fountain of knowledge. He is awesome. He has uh, inspired me listening to him talk. And not only that, he also has, uh, he practices what he teaches. So he's a real teacher. He's not a fake teacher like business school teachers. So you got to come learn from him. And now the best-selling author of The Carnivore Diet and the multiple-time Joe Rogan guest, Dr. Sean Baker, joins our two-day interactive business growth and life optimization workshop. Also, let me tell you this, folks. I don't want to get this wrong because if I get it wrong, um, someone's going to say, you screwed that up, buddy. So Michael <laughs> Levine, this is Michael Levine. He's going to be coming. You say, Who, who's Michael Levine? I don't want to get this wrong. This is the PR consultant of choice for Michael Jackson, wow. for Prince, wow. for Nike, for mm -hmm. Charlton Heston, for Nancy mm -hmm. Kerrigan, 34 Grammy Award winners, 43 New York Times bestselling authors he's represented, including... Pretty much everybody you know who's been a super celebrity. This is Michael Levine, a good friend of mine. He's going to come and talk to you about personal branding and the mindset needed to be super successful. The lineup will continue to grow. We have hit Christian recording artist Colton Dixon in the house. Now, people say, Colton Dixon's in the house? 
Yes, Colton Dixon's in the house. So if you like top 40 Christian music, Colton Dixon's going to be in the house performing. The lineup will continue to grow each and every day. We're going to add more and more speakers to this all-star lineup. But I encourage everybody out there today, get those tickets today. Go to thrivetimeshow.com. Again, that's thrivetimeshow.com. And some people might be saying, well, how do I do it? What do I do? How does it work? You just go to thrivetimeshow.com. Let's go there now. We're feeling the flow. We're going to thrivetimeshow.com. Again, you just go to thrivetimeshow.com. You click on the business conferences button and you click on the request tickets button right there. Um, the way I do our conferences is we tell people it's $250 to get a ticket yep, or whatever price that you can afford. And the reason why I do that is I grew up without money. Uh, JT, you're in the process of building a super successful company. Um, yep. Did you start out with a million dollars in the bank account? No, I did not. Nope. Did not get any loans, nothing like that. Did not get an inheritance from parents or anything like that. I had to work for it. And I uh, am super grateful. I came to a business conference. That's actually how I met you, met Peter Taunton. I met all these people. So if you're out there today and you want to come to our workshop again, you just got to go to thrivetimeshow.com. You might say, well, when's it going to be? June 27th and 28th. And you might say, well, who's speaking? We already covered that. You might say, where's it going to be? It's going to be in Tulsa, Jerusalem, Oklahoma. And someone says, Tulsa, Jerusalem. Uh, it's I'm really trying to rebrand Tulsa as Tulsa Jerusalem, sort of like the Jerusalem of America. But if you go to, if you type in Thrive Time Show and Jinx, you can get a sneak peek or a look at our office facility. This is what it looks like. This is where you're headed. It's going to be a blasty blast. You can look inside, see the facility. We're going to have hundreds of entrepreneurs here. It is going to be packed. Now, for this particular event, folks, uh, the seating is always limited because my facility isn't a limitless um convention center you're coming to my actual home office and so it's going to be packed so when june 27th and 28th who you you're going to come who you I'm, I'm talking to you you can just get your tickets right now at thrivetimeshow.com and again you can name your price we tell people it's 250 dollars or whatever price you can afford and we do have some select vip tickets which gives you an access to meet some of the speakers and those sorts of things and those tickets are 500 dollars. it's a two-day interactive business workshop over 20 hours of business training we're going to give you a copy of my newest book the millionaire's guide to becoming sustainably rich you're going to leave with a workbook you're going to leave with everything you need to know to start and grow a super successful company it's practical it's actionable and it's tebow time right here in Tulsa, Jerusalem. Get those tickets today at thrivetimeshow.com. Again, that's thrivetimeshow.com. Hello, I'm Michael Levine, and I'm talking to you right now from the center of Hollywood, California, where I have represented over the last 35 years 58 Academy Award winners, 34 Grammy Award winners, 43 New York Times bestsellers. I've represented a lot of major stars, and I've worked with a lot of major companies and I think I've learned a few things about what makes them work and what makes them not work. Now, why would a man living in Hollywood, California in the beautiful sunny weather of LA come to Tulsa? Because last year I did it and it was damn exciting. Clay Clark has put together an exceptional uh, presentation, really life-changing and I'm looking forward to seeing you then. I'm Michael Levine. I'll see you in Tulsa. James, did I tell you my good friend John Lee Dumas is also joining us at the in-person two-day interactive Thrive Time Show Business Workshop? That Tim Tebow and that uh, Michael Levine will be at. Have I told you this? You have not told me that. Oh, he's coming all the way from Puerto Rico. This is John Lee Dumas, the host of the Chart Topping EOFire.com podcast. He's absolutely a living legend. This guy started a podcast after uh, uh, wrapping up his service in the United States military. And he started recording this podcast daily in his home to the point where he started interviewing big time folks like Gary Vaynerchuk, like Tony Robbins. And he just kept interviewing bigger and bigger names, putting out shows day after day. And now he is the legendary host of the EO Fire podcast. And he's traveling all the way from Puerto Rico to Tulsa, Oklahoma, to attend the in-person June 27th and 28th Thrive Time Show two-day interactive business workshop. If you're out there today, folks, you've ever wanted to grow a podcast, a broadcast, you want to get, an, you want to improve your marketing. If you've ever wanted to improve your 
marketing, your branding. If you've ever wanted to increase your sales, you want to come to the two-day interactive June 27th and 28th Thrive Time Show Business Workshop featuring Tim Tebow, Michael Levine, John Lee Dumas, and countless big-time super successful entrepreneurs. It's going to be life-changing. Get your tickets right now at thrivetimeshow.com. James, what website is that? thrivetimeshow.com. James, one more time for more enthusiasm. thrivetimeshow.com. Shine. Everything rides on tonight Even if I got three strikes I'ma go for it This moment we own it eh? I'm not to be played with Because it could get dangerous See these people I ride with This moment we own it Thrive Time Show two-day interactive business workshops are the world's highest rated and most reviewed business workshops because we teach you what you need to know to grow. You can learn the proven 13-point uh, business system that Dr. Zellner and I have used over and over to start and grow successful companies. When we get into the specifics, the specific steps on what you need to do to optimize your website, we're going to teach you how to fix your conversion rate. Uh, we're going to teach you how to do a social media marketing campaign that works. How do you raise capital? How do you get a small business loan? We teach you everything you need to know here during a two-day, 15-hour workshop. It's all here for you. You work every day in your business, but for two days you can escape and work on your business and build these proven systems so now you can have a successful company that will produce both the time freedom and the financial freedom that you deserve. You're going to leave energized, motivated, but you're also going to leave empowered. The reason why I've built these workshops is because as an entrepreneur, I always wish that I had this. And because there wasn't anything like this, I would go to these motivational seminars, no money down, real estate, Ponzi scheme, get motivated seminars, and they would never teach me anything. It was like you went there and you paid for the, the big chocolate Easter bunny, but inside of it, it was a hollow nothingness. And I wanted the knowledge, and they're like, oh, but we'll teach you the knowledge after our next workshop. And the great thing is we, we have nothing to upsell. At every workshop, we teach you what you need to know. There's no one in the back of the room trying to sell you some next big uh, get-rich-quick, walk-on-hot-coals uh, product. It's literally we teach you the brass tacks, the specific stuff that you need to know to learn how to start and grow a business. And I encourage you to not believe what I'm saying, and I want you to Google uh, the Z66 Auto Auction. I want you to Google Elephant in the Room. Look at Robert Zellner and Associates. Look them up and say, are they successful because they're geniuses or are they successful because they have a proven system? When you do that research, you will discover that the same systems that we use in our own business can be used in your business. Come to Tulsa, book a ticket, and I guarantee you it's going to be the best business workshop ever. And we'll even give you your money back if you don't love it. We've built this facility for you and we're excited to see you. Now you may be thinking, what does it actually cost to attend an in-person two-day interactive Thrive Time Show business workshop? Well, good news. The tickets are $250 or whatever price that you can afford. What? Yes, they're $250 or whatever price you can afford. I grew up without money, and I know what it's like to live without money. So if you're out there today and you want to attend our in-person two-day interactive business workshop, all you got to do is go to thrivetimeshow.com to request those tickets. And if you can't afford $250, we have scholarship pricing available to make it affordable for you. I learned at the Academy in Kings Point in New York, octa non verba. Watch what a person does, not what they say. Whoa. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Harvard Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Radio Show. Today I'm broadcasting from Phoenix, Arizona, not Scottsdale, Arizona. They're close, but they're completely different worlds. And uh, we have a special guest today. Uh, definition of intelligence is if you agree with me, you're intelligent. And so this gentleman is very intelligent. I've done this show before also, but very seldom do you find somebody who lines up on all counts. And so Mr. Clay Clark is a friend of a good friend, Eric, Eric Trump. But we're also talking about money, bricks, and how screwed up the world can get in a few and a half hour. So Clay Clark is a very intelligent man. And there's so many ways we could take this thing but I thought, uh, since you and Eric are close, Trump, what were you saying about what Trump can't, what Donald, who is my yeah. age, and I can say or cannot say? What, well, I have to, first of all, I have to honor you, sir. I want to show you what I did to one of your books here. 
There's All a right. guy by the name of Jeremy Thorne, who was my boss at the time. I was 19 years old working at Faith Highway. I had a job at Applebee's, Target, and DirecTV. And he said, have you read this book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad? And I said, no. And uh, my father, may he rest in peace, um, he didn't know these financial principles. So I started reading all of your books and uh, really devouring your books. And I went from being an employee to self-employed to the business owner to the investor. And I owe a lot of that to you. And I just want to take a moment to tell you thank you so much for allowing me to, to, to achieve success. And then I'll tell you all about Eric Trump. But I just want to tell you, thank you, sir, for changing my life. Well, not only that, Clay, you know, thank you, but you've become an influencer. You know, more than anything else, you've evolved into an influencer where your word has more and more power. So that's why I uh, congratulate you on becoming. Because as you know, there's a lot of fake influencers out there, too, or bad influencers. Yeah. So anyway, I'm, well, I'm, I'm glad you and I agree so much. And thanks for reading my books. Yeah. That's, that's the greatest thrill for me today. Not a thrill, but recognition is when people, young men especially, come up and say, I read your book, changed my life. I'm doing this, I'm doing this, I'm doing this. I learned at the Academy, King, King's Point in New York, octa non verba. Watch what a person does, not what they say. Whoa! Hey, I'm Ryan Wimpy. I'm originally from Tulsa, born and raised here. I went to a small private liberal arts college and got a degree in business. And I didn't learn anything like they're teaching here. I didn't learn linear workflows. I learned stuff that I'm not using and I haven't been using for the last nine years. So what they're teaching here is actually way better than what I got at business school. And I went what was actually ranked as a very good business school. The linear workflow, the linear workflow for us in getting everything out on paper and documented is really important. Um, like we have workflows that are kind of all over the place to so the having linear workflow and seeing that mapped out on multiple different boards uh, is pretty awesome. That's really helpful for me. The atmosphere here is awesome. I definitely just stared at the walls figuring out how to make my facility look like this place. This place rocks. It's invigorating. The walls are super, um, it's just very cool. The atmosphere is cool. The people are nice. Uh, it's a pretty cool place to be. Very good learning atmosphere. I literally want to model it and steal everything that's here at this facility and uh, basically create it just on our business side. Once I saw what they were doing, I knew I had to get here at the conference. This is probably the best conference or seminar I've ever been to in over 30 years in business. You're not bored. You're awake, alive the whole time. It's not pushy. They don't try to sell you a bunch of things. I was looking to learn how to just get control of my life, my schedule, and just get control of the business. Planning your time, breaking it all down, making time for the, you know, the F6 in your life, and just really implementing it and sticking with the program. It's really lively, He's, they're pretty friendly, uh, helpful, and uh, very welcoming. I attended a conference a couple months back and it was really the best business conference I've ever attended. At the workshop, I learned a lot about time management, um, really prioritizing what's the most important. The biggest takeaways are, you know, you want to take a step-by-step -step approach to your business. So whether it's marketing, you know, what are those three marketing tools that you want to use to human resources. Now, some of the most successful people and successful businesses in this town, their owners were here today because they wanted to know more from Clay and I found that to be kind of fascinating. The most valuable thing that I've learned is diligence. That businesses don't change overnight. It takes time and effort, and you gotta go through the ups and downs of getting it to where you wanna go. He actually gives you the roadmap out. I was stuck, didn't know what to do, and he gave me the roadmap out step by step. We've set up systems in the business that make my life much easier, allow me some time freedom. Here you can ask any question you want, they guarantee it'll be answered. This conference like motivates me and also give me a lot of knowledge and tools. It's up to you to do this. Um, everybody can do these things. There, there's stuff that everybody knows, but if you don't do it, nobody else can do it for you. I can see the marketing working. And it, it's just an approach that makes sense. Probably the most notable thing is just the, the income increase that we've had. Everyone's super fun, it's super motivating. Uh, I've been here before, but I'm back again because it motivates me. Your competition's gonna come eventually or try to pick up these tactics. So you better, you, if you don't, somebody else will. I'm Rachel with Tip Top Canine, and we just wanna give a huge thank you to Clay and Vanessa Clark.
Hey guys, I'm Ryan with Tip Top Canine. Just want to say a big thank you to Thrive 15. Thank you to Make Your Life Epic. We love you guys, we appreciate you, and really just appreciate how far you've taken us. This is our old house. Right? This is where we used to live a few years ago. This is our old neighborhood. See? It's uh, nice, right? So this is my old van and our old school marketing. And this is our old team. And by team, I mean it's me and another guy. This is our new house with our new neighborhood. This is our new van with our new marketing. And this is our new team. We went from four to 14 and I took this beautiful photo. We worked with several different business coaches in the past and they were all about helping Ryan sell better and um, just teaching sales, which is awesome, but Ryan is a really great salesman. So we didn't need that. We needed somebody to help us get everything that was in his head out into systems, into manuals and scripts and actually build a team. So now that we have systems in place, we've gone from one to 10 locations in only a year. In October 2016, we grew us 13 grand for the whole month. Uh, right now it's 2018, the month of October. It's only the 22nd. We've already grossed a little over 50 grand for the whole month, and we still have time to go. We're just thankful for you, thankful for Thrive and your mentorship, and we're really thankful that you guys have helped us to grow a business that we run now instead of the business running us. Just thank you, thank you, thank you times a thousand. So we really just want to thank you, Clay, and thank you, Vanessa, for everything you've done, everything you've helped us with. We love you guys. If you decide to not attend the Thrive Time Workshop, you're missing out on a great opportunity. The Atmosphere Plays Office is very lively. You can feel the energy as soon as you walk through the door. And it really got me and my team very excited. If you decide not to come, you're missing out on an opportunity to grow your business. Bottom line. Love the environment. I love the way that Clay presents and teaches. It's a way that not only allows me to comprehend what's going on, but he explains it in a way to where it just makes sense. The SEO optimization, branding, marketing. I've learned more in the last two days than I have the entire four years of college. The most valuable thing that I've learned, marketing is key. Uh, marketing is everything. Making sure that you're branded accurately and clearly. How to grow a business using Google reviews and then just how to optimize our name through our website also. Helpful with uh, a lot of marketing, search engine optimization, um, uh, helping us really rank high in Google. The biggest thing I needed to learn was how to build my foundation, how to systemize everything and optimize everything, build my SEO. How to become more organized, uh, more efficient. How to make sure the business is really there to serve me as opposed to me constantly being there for the business. New ways of advertising my business as well as recruiting new employees. Group interviews, number one. Uh, before we felt like we were held hostage by our employees, group interviews has completely eliminated that because you're able to really find the people that would really be the best fit. Hands on how to hire people, how to deal with human resources, um, a lot about marketing, and overall just how to structure the business, how it works for me, and also then how that can translate into working better for my clients. The most valuable thing I've learned here is time management. I like the one hour of doing your business is real critical if I'm going to grow and change. Play really teaches you how to navigate through those things and not only find freedom, but find your purpose in your business and find the purposes for all those other people that directly affect your business as well. Everybody. 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 Everyone. Everyone needs to attend the conference because you get an opportunity to see that it's real. Flyover family, come join us June the 27th and 28th, 2024 in Tulsa, Oklahoma. We're going to be there with Clay Clark, an amazing group of individuals that have made such a difference in so many people's lives. Do you want to increase your production in a job? Do you want to make more sales? Do you want to own your own business? Do you want to have breakthroughs financially? The key to that is knowledge. 
Clay Clark is anointed to help people in business. We've watched him over the last couple of years, and we've been blown away. He's part owner of over 160 businesses, $2.4 billion in sales. So before politics and, and the Great Reset came into Clay's life, he had the number one rated Apple podcast. And, and he interviewed people like Anthony Robbins, Seth Godin, the top authors, the top business minds in the world. At this specific event, there was an interesting cast of characters that come from gangs to American Idol. Some of the guests that are going to be there, Michael Levine, Colton Dixon, Peter Taunton, John Lee Dumas, Mondo De La Viga. And Tim Tebow. They're there to share what they've done and their breakthroughs and what their story is. And then Clay lays his map of business success, calls the path for every person to follow. So you may be sitting there thinking, okay, okay, I get it, I get it. What do I have to do? Go to thrivetimeshow.com. When you get there, the tickets are $250 or whatever you can afford. Yes, you got that right. $250 or whatever you can afford. You can name your price. So there are no excuses. You have to join us there. There are only a few VIP tickets left, like David said, special dinner uh, and special time with the speakers. That is $500 Why they last. So $500, only a few left if you want a VIP ticket. We want to meet these speakers as well, so we got VIP tickets. I want to meet Tim Tebow. I do too. <laughs> The date is June the 27th and 28th, 2024 in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Go to thrivetimeshow.com to get your tickets. Hey guys, Luke Erickson here with the Thrive Time Show. As you can see behind me, we've got all kinds of energy going on. People are starting to show up for the conference and it is hot in this place. We got grill guns over here, we've got people playing the drums, we've got a fire breather, and man, people are so excited as they come in. The conference is kicked off. This house is packed. We've got Aaron Andes with Sean Holmes up there. We've got Steve Curry, Tim Toil, and the concepts up there. We're talking about what is possible when you just implement, when you implement, when you do the proven system. So exciting. People are going crazy. Now, Michael Levine, writer of many, many PR books, the man who represented people like Michael Jackson, Barbara Streisand, and George Bush. He's speaking to the people here at our conference, talking about branding. One of the greatest branding experts alive today is here at our conference, talking to entrepreneurs. We just wrapped up day one. It was incredible. We had some, some remarkable speakers. Michael Levine, we just finished with a, a lady named Jill Donovan, who owns a company called Rustic Cuff, talking about the power of the Dream 100. I cannot wait to see what tomorrow holds. People are so excited to be here for day two. It is gonna be incredible. Cannot wait to see what today has in store. Right now, here at the conference, we've broken into groups going over search engine optimization. And I know for most of us, myself included, if you hear that term, you go, what is that? What does that mean? That's too techy for me. Well, our experts are breaking it down for people so that you can clearly understand how to come up top in Google. It's doable, it's possible. We're in the middle of a break, and what we like to do is we like to give you as much tangible and relevant information from about the start of the hour for 45 minutes. Then we take approximately a 15 minute break to allow people to connect with other entrepreneurs around them, bathroom breaks, and also use this time to just really digest all of the good information that you're receiving the whole time. Right behind me, we've got Bob with his grill gun. 
melting an ice sculpture. It is awesome. The ice sculpture represents our life, right? It's here for a time, but we all need to have the sense of urgency to implement the things that we're learning so that we can make the most of the time that we have. We are outside, you can see a line behind me. What's going on is that we partner with different companies to help them implement the proven systems over and over and over again. And one of those companies is Master Machine. And so what we like to do is partner with these companies to also help them give samples to other people as they come to the conference and truly get their name out. I just wanted to recap some of the amazing things that have happened today. We've had entrepreneurs like Paul Hood with Hood CPAs. We've had Jill Donovan and Michael Levine come up and just impart so much wisdom and knowledge. We've got an incredible giveaway for one of our TVs. Hey there, Thrive Nation. One of the things that we love most about our business conferences is that we want every entrepreneur to leave with their questions answered. So what we do is we let them put the questions up on the board here so that they can ask their specific questions and Clay will not end the conference until every question is answered. Behind this, Clay Clarkson is answering all the different questions that entrepreneurs have brought to the conference. Whenever someone comes here and starts to hear this information, especially for the first time, it just brings about so much anticipation of wanting to actually implement the proven systems and processes. And so Clay always wants to make sure that he answers all of those questions so that they are the most set up for success to be able to go home and start implementing. If you have any questions, email us at info at thrivetimeshow.com. Hello, I'm Wes Carter. I'm one of the shareholders at Winters and King. My favorite thing that Thrive has helped me accomplish here in our firm is thinking a little bit outside the box. They do SEO, they do printing, they help us with a lot of things to, from the day-to-day -day, um, marketing for the firm, but they also help us think of things that as attorneys we probably wouldn't normally think of that help us market our services to our clients. One of the things I love about working with Thrive is that they make it enjoyable to actually do work with them. It's not dry, it's usually fun, but it's always very enjoyable and practical. They give me things and ideas that I can put into place. It's not just some theoretical spiel that they give me. We get practical steps that we work on together to do my job better. So me personally, I would easily recommend Thrive 15 services to my friends, my families. I recommend them to my clients. Uh, I think they do a good job. They're passionate. They care about their clients. And I think it's actually a valuable service they provide to people that are in the business world. My name is Jeff Thomas. I'm originally from Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, it's all about getting to the grindstone. It is about putting the it's, it's one thing to have a specific vision or a dream, but knowledge without application is, isn't knowledge at all. It's a, that's nothing. Really funny, uh, the atmosphere is very lively. Everybody that is working for Clay is uh, very upbeat and not tired, not sluggish, not complaining, not whining. They don't have anything to do with those types of characteristics. It's all about getting to the grind and having fun while you do it. I haven't actually been to any conferences in the past, but what I will say from what I've seen on YouTube and what from other friends have told me is this isn't like a motivational kind of thing to just, you know, hoo hoo, rah rah, get you motivated, but it's like practical steps that if you do take them, which most people aren't willing to do, then you will grow and you will, you'll, you'll achieve the specific things that you want. Well, for one thing, I will say that this isn't necessarily for everyone, so if you're not willing to work, this isn't for you. But I will say that if you are willing to work and you, you, you know you're just getting started, but you have actually taken a step to in that direction, then this will actually help you grow further exponentially than, than you could ever imagine. My name is Taylor Hall. I'm the general manager of the Tulsa Oilers professional hockey team. You know, our goal every night here at the BOK Center is to try to fill the seats with, uh, with lots of people. Uh, and create a, you know, a, an exciting environment uh, so when somebody comes to a game, uh, they want to come back.
working with Clay and the staff at Thrive, uh, they've really helped uh, you know, us in many, many ways. Website and graphic design and video production and a lot of things that go along. And a lot of businesses, including ours, doesn't have a staff for a full-time you know, videographer or a graphic designer. But the biggest thing that we noticed was the needle mover. More sales, more attendance, uh, more successes in business. We had a record year last season working with Clay for the first time. Uh, our average attendance is higher uh, than it's ever been. Uh, so there was a lot of really cool things that we did and they worked. That's the nice thing about working with Clay and the team over there. It's just not one person, you get the entire team. If you need video uh, design and editing and production, they've got that. If you need graphic design, if you need some coaching, your, your salespeople and call scripts, PR, uh, they offer all that. Clay was instrumental in helping guiding us uh, and getting us on the right track so that you know, we could you know, really you know, raise, the, raise the bar and become ultra successful. So it, it's been an, an amazing experience for us. Justice Tumbling Company in Tulsa. Working with Clay is so helpful, um, just being diligent with everything and making sure we execute our goals and just really make things happen. Um, it's fun, it's high, um, it really gets you energized and going, it just makes you really want to work. To get the momentum going, to really just like get that buzz, just really give you the energy to get up and make it happen. I'm uh, Bob Healy. I'm in the charcoal grilling industry and the name of my business is Grill Blazer. How will I apply what I've learned so far uh, into my business? I, I'm a, actually a client that, uh, of, of Thrive 15 and I learn so much from what I'm learning at this conference and from my regular weekly attendance that it's helping me establish the business and get it off the ground. Clay's presentation style is just uh, blatant disregard for what anybody wants. He just has fun, it's him, everything that you see is, is authentically Clay. It's a great deal of fun, everybody enjoys it. They know when they walk in they think they're coming into a carnival, and frankly they are. It's just great fun. There's not another conference like it. You, you just don't go to a carnival atmosphere and learn like you do here at a drive conference. It's great. The reason people should attend at least one of these conferences is because it's common sense. And everybody's fed an entire line about the way you should run a business, but until you actually experience running a business, which is, candidly, what you learn here, how to run a business, you don't know what you're doing. My name is Tyler Hastings, and this is my wife, Rachel, and our company is Delrick Research uh, out of New Orleans. Uh, during our time working with Thrive, we've had numerous successes. Uh, when we first started, we were working with one physician. We had one research site, and we were seeing on average, you know, between 10 and 15 patients a week. Um, since working with Thrive in the last 18 months, we now have four research sites. We work with over five physicians, and on average, we're now seeing over 60 patients per week. Um, recently, we've been the top enroller worldwide in seven studies, um, which is just incredible considering where we were you know, two years ago, 18 months ago. Thrive really differs from the other conferences that we've been to and the other kind of programs that we've been through because they actually really practice what they preach and they implement the same systems and the processes that they teach you about and they give you real life examples that have really worked for them and show you with the training um, how to implement that yourself. For example, Tyler and I actually got the opportunity to come out to Tulsa and we're fortunate enough that the Thrive team took us out to some of the businesses that they own and we really got to see in real life, real time, some of the systems and processes and it was just incredible. Um, a real life example of some of the businesses and the things that they're implementing. Having a coach is important to us. Um, they act as not only an accountability factor, um, but they're someone we can talk to on a daily basis as we go through the problems of running a business that inevitably come up. Um, they, they always understand what we're going through and they're always there uh, to you know, help us or guide us through the problems that we experience. 
The best part of our experience working with Thrive um, has just been seeing our relationship grow. So at each step as our business grows, you know, they have something else to provide us with. Um, they, they've got the resources, uh, whether it be marketing, graphic design, website development, or even in uh, accounting practices, maybe we need a new insurance policy. They have someone they can connect us with, or you know, they have the direct uh, resource we need to speak with for any of the problems we face. Uh, if someone's thinking about signing up for the coaching program, I would highly recommend that they call in for a free 30-minute coaching, coaching session um, and see exactly what the team can do for you. Just speak with someone and let them know what you're going through. And I think you'll find that you know, regardless of what you need, there's someone there that can help you. Clay's presentation style uh, is very real and raw. Like, it just gets real down to the bone of it and the real purpose of it. There's no, like, fluffy vagueness about it, you know? So, he really gets to the point. I'm always reminded about how important it is to be intentional and to really, really pay attention to how you schedule your time and really honor it. Um, because whatever gets scheduled gets done. Uh, that's what he said from Lee, Lee Cockrell. So, um, just constantly hearing that and getting reminded uh, helps me to reinforce that into my own life. Um, it always helps to get an outside perspective, and especially from a guy that's uh, grown so many multi-million dollar businesses, it doesn't hurt. So. My name is Nick Guajardo. Uh, I heard about the Thrive Time Show workshop through um, Andy Matherin. He is my, uh, my Andy Matherin and Larry Montgomery. Um, they're my bosses at Restore Home Health. So I work with um, a home health com company called Restore Home Health. And my role is pr pretty much to bring in business. So I was hoping, hoping to learn kind of the sales process on top of just kind of the responsibilities and help understand what it looks like on the SEO side and just kind of on all around what it looks like to own a business because that's something I want to do in the future for sure. How I would describe the atmosphere here at Thrive um, is ex high energy, um, great professionalism, great people. It's just it's a place you definitely want to visit and be at. Clay's delivery style, humorous, professional, hilarious. Just he does it. I haven't seen someone do it better. So he does he does a great job. Most valuable thing I've learned so far. Um, a lot of it has been extremely valuable. So. But one, one thing that's always really stuck out to me is the S learning the SEO stuff. I mean, that is, I think, things you don't um, really even think about, and then you hear it, and you think you know it, but you don't know it. So I feel like that was the most valuable. Well, they're missing, on, they're missing out on just what comes down to just ba basic applications to be a business owner. I mean, I feel like it's like an absolute necessity, you know, to come here and learn the, the ins and outs, and may, maybe come here once and twi or twice if they, you know, take good notes, that kind of thing. Why? To just, to, it's the experience here and what you can learn, like absolutely. So marketing and SEO seemed like something that would be very scary, um, but then in the way that Clay and his team described it, it became very clear and concise and something that's very accessible to any business owner. Uh, I've learned a lot about marketing at this conference and a lot about business management and HR. Really everything, the key components of anybody's business, they're going to give you the best tools to be successful in it. So most workshops or conferences can be really boring, really one note, or they just seem so theatrical that it's a joke and it's not even giving you the tools that you need or that you came there for. But here it's still high energy, it's still fun, um, everything's to the point, but it's very perfect. And uh, yeah, uh, you're missing out on easy uh, steps to use in your business that are very accessible and very clear. My name is Abigail McCarter. The best thing I've learned so far is definitely like organization, schedule wise, always keeping a to do list, keeping your calendar organized. I'm kind of all over the place, so that's always good to know. So, Clay's presentation style and the atmosphere is electric. It's so energetic, it's so fun. Um, Clay's hilarious, but also knows a ton, so it's just really great all around. 
this conference is much different than any other conference I've gone to. Again, because it's fun. Like a lot of other conferences, you're, it's like really quiet, really cold, and you just kind of get bored. Um, but this one, you're like always engaged, you're always learning something, and they're, they're, the staff is amazing. Um, they're always super helpful, so it's just been really great. My name is Clint Howell. We're a personal training and fitness training facility. Oh wow, I'm learning a ton. Uh, like this morning so far has been search engine optimization. So really just the importance of being at the top of Google, um, how Google works and why it's so important to go out and get video reviews and, and uh, testimonials and getting uh, Google reviews. And so all those things we can take back and really apply that like immediately. So it's really cool to see um, not only how to do it, but really the relevance and importance of it in your long-term strategy of your business. Now, it's amazing. Actually, on the way in this morning and yesterday, I was videoing as I was walking in the front entrance. Uh, and actually, me, I, I go to a lot of seminars. I go to a lot of conferences, masterminds. I've been doing that since I was like 22 years old. So, uh, gosh, almost 20 years now. And uh, this is by far the most entertaining. Uh, not only the content, the content's amazing. But Clay and you guys do a great job of mixing in uh, edutainment, entertainment, where it's fun, it's fresh, it's lively. Uh, you never get bored. And um, I heard a study one time that um, re the reason that children learn so much quicker is because it's fun. Learning is fun. And so obviously Clay has nailed that. Where it's very fun to be here and uh, keeps you awake, keeps you energized. So I'm having a blast. Yeah, I think I think any business owner or someone that wants to own a business or considering owning and starting a business should definitely come. I know that I've, I've, I was referred here by friends of mine and clients of mine, and I've referred other people. Uh, again, just to understand what it takes to make a business successful, uh, to have a good time, obviously, you know, like I was just saying, have fun, and network. There's a lot of other people here you can learn from, and there's a lot of breaks you can talk to other people. Uh, so I think this is a must attend for anybody that owns a business or that wants to start a business. My name's Jamie Fagel, I'm with Jameson Fine Cabinetry. I heard about the conference through Andrew, he's uh, the coach that I, I deal with here at the Thrive. The most valuable piece I found, even working with Andrew, but it's been solidified when it came here, was you gotta actually do the things that they're telling you. Uh, with no action, you're not gonna get anything from it. I would highly recommend this to almost anybody in business today. Um, I have recommended it to some of my other business partners. Um, it's phenomenal, it's really something that if you want to start a business, the old way of doing things is gone. This is what you got to do. It's the only way it'll work. Hey, this is Charles and Amber Kola. We're the owners of Kola Fitness. The way we're able to do that is working with Clay for the last three years. He has really um, readjusted our thinking and taught us that our business is here to serve us. And by doing that, we're able to live the lifestyle we want and take off on a random vacation last minute. We had totally planned on being at the conference, so wish we could be there and meet all of you. Hope you, I, we know you're having a great time. So yes, come. Clay in the last three years has helped us build all the necessary systems, checklists, workflows, task lists, time blocks, audits that are always running, and the right capable lieutenants to keep track of all that, so that you too can get time freedom, financial freedom, and that's what we have done. And Clay has helped us do. We've got multiple companies in multiple states and they're all doing very well, getting ready to go two more locations in this next year. And Cola Fitness has a really big future. We're teaming up with a couple other groups and we should scale the company here shortly. Hopefully we'll open like 50 locations in the next 10 years. So, but yeah, we're on the way. We're gonna probably more than double our company, maybe triple our company in the next eight to nine months. And it's just awesome. God is working in our business and we're making Jesus and changing lives. We're a strong Christian company that focuses on making Jesus famous and changing lives in the fitness field. And this is Charles and Amber Cola. Thank you, Thrive. Hit your action items. We love you guys. Yeah. We wish we were there. You guys have, have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. My name is Jennifer Johnson. Um, I'm in the pest control industry and also weed control fertilization. And my business is Platinum Pest and Lawn. Um, some of the things that, uh, I'll be able to apply a lot of the things that I've learned in our business because this is not my first conference and so a lot of the things that we learned we put into place and now we're doing the next level of refining the processes or uh, just the different concepts and so it's getting better and better. Things that were just big processes before, we, we have the foundation laid and now we're able to make it better and better and I'm hearing different things now that we've implemented things and so we can just make it even better uh, implementing it into our own business.
Clay's presentation and the atmosphere is very exciting and fun. It keeps you awake. Um, it makes it interesting. You have a lot of information, but if it's not going to be entertaining, your brain is going to tune it out. What? But Clay makes it just entertaining enough that you retain what you learn. Lots of rhyming and catch, catchy things so that you remember stuff. What makes you? Something that makes this conference different than other workshops or conferences that I've been to is that there's a lot of people here in my same situation. We're all, most of us are pretty small businesses wanting to improve um, and we want real life information and, and something that will work and that's attainable and not just some crazy magic formula but actual action items that we can implement in our business and actually see a difference. Everyone should attend a Thrive Time Business Conference, whether you're a business owner or not. A, if you're a business owner, it has practical applications that you can apply to so many different parts of your business, and then you need to come back for more so that you can keep doing more of the wonderful things that you learn. But secondly, I am also a mom of three kids, and a lot of the concepts can actually be applied to home, like getting routines and getting um, uh, setting systems at home has just seriously made a huge difference in my life at home. So I've been able to improve our business, but I've also been able to improve things at home. And so that's why everyone should come, no matter what your station is in life. Yeah, my name is Nolan Q. I'm originally from San Francisco, California. The industry that I'm in is uh, financial services. I've learned a ton so far, but what I could best apply uh, from this conference is the opportunity, that, that hunger to go out there and make a big difference uh, in my industry. Clay's presentation style is amazing. He's got an endless amount of energy. It's, it's, uh, it's contagious. And yeah, by being here, I really do want uh, to go back and be able to face all the adversity that the industry has. Yeah, this conference, uh, the thing that makes it different is that it's special because it has a unique set of individuals uh, that all share that same energy. I think he plays it as uh, dragon energy, but yeah, that, uh, that's, that's okay. Everyone should come to multiple, but uh, their first would be very special. Yeah, you're welcome with a lot of enthusiasm That's a, that'll last for a long time. My name is Gabriella Cruz. Our business is ACS Electric. Um, my husband's the owner, but um, I'm involved with that, and so we're an electrical company. Well, um, here at the conference, they talk a lot about consistency, um, and so just stay consistent with different um, different things in the business, and I feel like applying that to our business model will really help us um, grow. Um, the atmosphere is very positive, um, uplifting, and then it's um, very fun and energetic, and so it gets you gets you pumped and it gets you excited um, and it encourages you to do big things. I uh, Probably how real they are. They tell you up front what you need to do and what's like a no-go and some com conferences are, they kind of sugarcoat things so I like how real they are here. I think it'll definitely, if you want your business to grow, I think this would be a great, um, a great experience and then not only that, it'll um, encourage you and inform you on so many things you don't think about on a daily basis. Hey, I'm Ryan Wimpy. I'm originally from Tulsa, born and raised here. I've definitely learned a lot about life design and making sure the business serves you. The linear workflow, the linear workflow for us and getting everything out on paper and documented is really important. Um, like we have workflows that are kind of all over the place, so the having linear workflow and seeing that mapped out on multiple different boards uh, is pretty awesome. That's really helpful for me. The atmosphere here is awesome. I definitely just stared at the walls figuring out how to make my facility look like this place. This place rocks. It's invigorating. The walls are super, um, it's just very cool. The atmosphere is cool. The people are nice. Uh, it's a pretty cool place to be. Very good learning atmosphere. I literally want to model it and steal everything that's here at this facility and uh, basically create it just on our business side. Play is hilarious. I literally laughed so hard that I started having tears yesterday um, and we've been learning a lot which you know we've been sitting here we've been learning a lot and so the humor definitely definitely helps it breaks it up um, but the content is awesome off the charts and it's very interactive you can raise your hand it's not like a, you're just listening to the professor speak you know the wizard teaches but the wizard interacts and he takes questions so that's awesome if you're not attending the conference you're missing about three quarters to half of your life um, you're definitely it's, it's probably worth a couple thousand dollars. So 
you're missing the thought process of someone that's already started like nine profitable businesses. So not only is it a lot of good information, but just getting in the thought process of Clay Clark or Dr. Zellner or any of the other coaches, getting in the thought process of how they're starting all these businesses, to me, just that is, is priceless. That's, that's money. Well, we're definitely not getting upsold here. Um, my wife and I have attended conferences where they up, where it was great information and then they upsold us like half the conference and I don't wanna like bang my head into a wall and she's like banging her head into the chair in front of her. Like it's good information, but we're like, oh my gosh, I wanna strangle you, shut up and go with the presentation that we paid for. And that's not here. There's no upsells or anything, so that's awesome. I hate that. It, oh, it makes me angry. So glad that's not happening. So the cost of this conference is quite a bit cheaper than business college. Um, I went to a small private liberal arts college and got a degree in business and I didn't learn anything like they're teaching here. I didn't learn linear workflows. I learned stuff that I'm not using and I haven't been using for the last nine years. So what they're teaching here is actually way better than what I got at business school. And I went what was actually ranked as a very good business school. I would definitely recommend that people would check out the Thrive 15 conference. It's the information that you're gonna get is just very, very beneficial, and the mindset that you're gonna get, that you're gonna leave with, is just absolutely worth the price of a little bit of money and a few days worth of your time. I'm Rachel with Tip Top Canine, and we just wanna give a huge thank you to Clay and Vanessa Clark. Hey guys, I'm Ryan with Tip Top Canine. Just wanna say a big thank you to Thrive 15. Thank you to Make Your Life Epic. We love you guys, we appreciate you, and really just appreciate how far you've taken us. This is our old house. Right? This is where we used to live a few years ago. This is our old neighborhood. See? It's uh, nice, right? So this is my old van and our old school marketing. And this is our old team. And by team, I mean it's me and another guy. This is our new house with our new neighborhood. This is our new van with our new marketing, and this is our new team. We went from four to 14, and I took this beautiful photo. We worked with several different business coaches in the past, and they were all about helping Ryan sell better and um, just teaching sales, which is awesome, but Ryan is a really great salesman, so we didn't need that. We needed somebody to help us get everything that was in his head out into systems, into manuals and scripts, and actually build a team. So now that we have systems in place, we've gone from one to 10 locations in only a year. In October 2016, we grew us 13 grand for the whole month. Uh, right now, it's 2018, the month of October. It's only the 22nd. We've already grossed a little over 50 grand for the whole month, and we still have time to go. We're just thankful for you, thankful for Thrive and your mentorship, and we're really thankful that you guys have helped us to grow a business that we run now instead of the business running us. Just thank you, thank you, thank you times a thousand. So we really just want to thank you, Clay, and thank you, Vanessa, for everything you've done, everything you've helped us with. We love you guys. Hello, my name is Charles Kolaw with Kolaw Fitness. Uh, today I want to tell you a little bit about Clay Clark and how I know Clay Clark. Clay Clark has been my business coach since 2017. He's helped us grow from two locations to now six locations. We're planning to do seven locations in seven years and then franchise. And Clay has done a great job of helping us navigate anything that has to do with like running the business, building the systems, the checklists, the workflows, the audits, um, how to, how to um, navigate lease agreements, how to uh, buy property, um, how to uh, work with brokers and builders. This guy is just amazing. He's, he's This kind of guy has worked in every single industry. He's written books with like Lee Crockwell, head of Disney with the 40,000 cast members. Um, he's friends with like Mike Lindell. Um, he does Reawaken America tours where he does these tours all across the country where 10,000 or more people show up to some of these tours on the day to day he does anywhere from uh, about 160 companies he's at the top he has a team of uh, business coaches videographers and graphic designers and web developers and they run 160 companies every single week so think of this guy with a team of business coaches running 160 companies so in the weekly he's running 160 companies um, every six to eight weeks, he's doing Reawaken America tours. Every six to eight weeks, he's also doing business conferences where 200 people show up and he teaches people a 13 step proven system that he's done and worked with billionaires, helping them grow their companies. Um, so he's, I've seen guys from startups go from startup to being multimillionaires. 
um, teaching people how to get time freedom and financial freedom through the system critical thinking, document creation, um, making it, putting it into, uh, or organizing everything in their head to building into a, a franchisable, scalable business. Like one of his businesses has like 500 franchises. That's just one of the companies or brands that he works with. So amazing guy, Elon Musk, kind, kind of like smart guy. Um, he kind of comes off sometimes as socially awkward, but he's so brilliant and he's taught me so much. When I say that, like, like Clay is like, he doesn't care what people think when you're talking to him. He cares about where you're going in your life and where he can get you to go. Um, and that's what I like the most about him. He's like, he's like a, a good coach. A coach isn't just making you feel good all the time. A coach is actually helping you get to the best you. And Clay has been an amazing business coach. Through the course of that, we became friends. Um, my, I was really most impressed with him is when I was shadowing him one time. Um, we went into a business deal and listened to it. I, I got to shadow and listen to it. And when we walked out, I knew that he could make millions on the deal. And they were super excited about working with him. And he told me, he's like, I'm not going to touch it. I'm going to turn it down. Um, because he knew it was going to harm the common good of people in the long run. And uh, the guy's integrity um, just really wowed me. Uh, it brought tears to my eyes to see that this guy, his, he doesn't, his highest desire was to do what's right. And um, uh, anyways, just, just, just an amazing man. So anyways, impacted me a lot. Um, he's helped navigate. Anytime I've gotten nervous or worried about uh, how to run the company or uh, you know, navigating competition and, 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 and an economy that's like, I remember we got closed down for three months. He helped us navigate on how to stay open, how to, how to get back open, how to um, uh, just survive through all the COVID shutdowns, lockdowns, because our clubs were all closed for three months and you have $350,000 of bills you've got to pay and uh, we have no accounts receivable. He helped us navigate that. Um, and of course we were conservative enough that we could afford to, to take that on for a period of time. But it was, uh, anyways, great man. I'm very imp impressed with him. So Clay, thank you for everything you're doing. And um, I encourage you if, you, if you haven't ever worked with Clay, work with Clay, he's gonna help magnify you. And there's nobody I have ever met that has the ability to work as hard as he does. He probably sleeps four, maybe six hours a day and literally the rest of the time he's working and he can outwork everybody in the room every single day and and he loves it so anyways um this is charles cola with cola fitness thank you clay um, and anybody out there that's wanting to work with clay um, it's a great great uh, opportunity to ever work with him so you guys have a blessed one this is charles cola we'll see you guys bye bye hi i'm aaron antis with shaw homes i first heard about clay through a mortgage lender here in town who had told me what a great job he had been doing for them and i actually noticed he was driving a lamborghini all of a sudden so i was willing to listen uh, in my career i've sold a little over 800 million dollars in real estate so honestly, I thought I kind of knew everything about marketing and um, homes. And then I met Clay and my perception of what I knew and what I could do definitely changed. After doing 800 million in sales over a 15 year career, I really thought I knew what I was doing. I've been managing a large team of salespeople for the last 10 years here with Shaw Homes. And I mean, we've been a company that's been in business for 35 years. We've become one of the largest builders in the Tulsa area, and uh, that was without Clay. So when I came to know Clay, I really thought, man, there's not much more I need to know, but I'm willing to listen. The interesting thing is our internet leads from our website has actually in a four month period of time has gone from somewhere around 10 to 15 leads in a month to 180 internet leads in a month. Just from the few things that he's shown us how to implement that I honestly probably never would have come up with on my own. So uh, I got a lot of good things to say about the system that Clay put in place with us. And it's just been an incredible experience. I am very glad that we met and had the opportunity to work with Clay. So the interaction with the team and with Clay on a weekly basis is honestly very enlightening. One of the things that I love about Clay's perspective on things is that he doesn't come from my industry. He's not somebody who's in the home building industry. I've listened to all the experts in my field. Our company has paid for me to go to seminars, international builder shows, 
all kinds of places where I've had the opportunity to learn from the experts in my industry. But the thing that I found working with Clay is that he comes from such a broad spectrum of working with so many different types of businesses that he has a perspective that's difficult for me to gain because I get so entrenched in what I do, I'm not paying attention to what other leading industry experts are doing. And Clay really brings that perspective for me. It is very valuable time every week when I get that hour with him. From my perspective, the reason that any business owner who's thinking about hooking up with Thrive needs to definitely consider it is because the results that we've gotten in a very short period of time are honestly monumental. It has really exceeded my wildest expectation of what he might be able to do. I came in skeptical because I'm very pragmatic and as I've gone through the process over just a few months, I've realized it's probably one of the best moves we've ever made. I think a lot of people probably feel like they don't need a business or marketing consultant because they maybe are a little bit prideful and like to think they know everything. I know that's how I felt coming in. I mean, we're a big company that's definitely one of the largest in town. And so we kind of felt like we knew what we were doing. And I think for a lot of people, they let their ego get in the way of listening to somebody that might have a better or different perspective than theirs. I would just really encourage you if you're thinking about working with Clay. I mean, the thing is, it's month to month. Go give it a try and see what happens. I think in the 35 year history of Shaw Homes, this is probably the best thing that's happened to us. And I know if you give them a shot, I think you'll feel the same way. I know for me, the thing I would have missed out on if I didn't work with Clay is I would have missed out on literally an 1800% increase in our internet leads. Going from 10 a month to 180 a month, that would have been a huge financial decision to just decide not to give it a shot. I would absolutely recommend Clay Clark to anybody who's thinking about working with somebody in marketing. I would skip over anybody else you were thinking about and I would go straight to Clay and his team. I guarantee you're not going to regret it because we sure haven't. My name is Danielle Sprick and I am the founder of D. Sprick Realty Group here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. After being a stay-at-home mom for 12 years and my three kids started school and they were in school full-time, I was at a crossroads and trying to decide what, what do I want to do. My degree and my background is in education, but after being a mom and staying home and all of that, I just didn't have a passion for it like I once did. My husband suggested real estate. He's a home builder, so real estate and home building go hand in hand. and we just rolled with it. I love people, I love working with people, I love the building relationships, um, but one thing that was really difficult for me was the business side of things. The processes and the advertising and marketing, I knew that I did not have what I needed to make that what it should be. So I reached out to Clay at that time and he and his team have been extremely instrumental in helping us build our brand, um, help market our business, our agents, the homes that we represent, everything that we do uh, is a direct line from Clay and his team and all that they've done for us. We launched our brokerage, our real estate brokerage, eight months ago. And in that time, we've gone from myself and one other agent to just this week, we signed on our 16th agent. Um, we have been blessed with the fact that we right now have just over 10 million in pending transactions. Three years ago, I never would have even imagined that I would be in this role that I'm in today, building a business, having 16 agents, but I have to give credit where credit's due, and Clay and his team and the business coaching that they've offered us has been huge. It's been instrumental in what we're doing. Don't ever limit your vision. When you dream big, big things happen. 
I started a business because I couldn't work for anyone else. I do things my way. Um, I do what I think is in the best interest of the patient. I don't answer to insurance companies. I don't answer to large corporate organizations. I answer to my patient and that's it. My thought when I opened my clinic was I can do this all myself. Uh, I don't need additional outside help in many ways. I, I mean, I, I went to medical school, I can figure this out. But it was a very, very steep learning curve. Within the first six months of opening my clinic, I had a $63,000 embezzlement. Um, I lost multiple employees. Clay helped us weather the storm of some of the things that are just a lot of people experience, especially in the medical world. He was instrumental in helping with the specific written business plan. He's been instrumental in hiring good quality employees, using the processes that he outlines for getting in good talent, which is extremely difficult. He helped me in securing the business loans. He helped me with uh, web development and search engine optimization. We've been able to really keep a steady stream of clients coming in uh, because they found us on the web. With everything that I encountered, everything that I experienced, I, I quickly learned it is worth every penny to have someone in your team that can walk you through and even avoid some of the pitfalls that are almost invariable in starting your own business. I'm Dr. Chad Edwards and I own Revolution Health and Wellness Clinic.